But uh, my favorite so far. What's your favorite? Of the three. My goodness. I think, good. honestly, I think you need to drink some grappa. I think you'd really like grappa. So I've had grappa, as yeah. you say. Grappa. Um, this is better than grappa. The Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy. This is Whiskey and the Six. I'm Rob. Welcome to the Whiskey Ramp Podcast. It's a little crusty. It's frustrating. And it's going to be a little bit of a rant. I don't understand it. I don't know why. Some sort of injustice. Anyway, and rant. Hello and welcome back to the Whiskey Ram Podcast. I'm Jeremy. I'm Rob. And tonight we are talking about one of the more interesting distilleries to pop up in the whiskey world, Waterford Distillery yeah. in Ireland. Yeah. Uh, really cool story behind these guys. Seems like there's a good amount of money behind them as well. Yeah. Right? So Mark Rayner, he was the CEO at Brooklady. Yeah. Uh, now the CEO at Waterford. Yep. Um, I actually did a really cool virtual tasting uh, through Toronto Whiskey Society with Waterford Distillery, and Mark was there. Um, I asked him a question. I'm like, why Ireland? Is it because of like the Scotch Whiskey uh, Association like restrictions? Like that's what I was thinking. That's, yeah. that's why they went to Ireland yeah. to do their distillery instead of Scotland. But he said no. He said it's because Ireland has the best barley in the world. Interesting. And that's that why they went there. And their whole um, mission plan, mission statement, is to tap into that and to distill different farms in Ireland. Which is really cool. And, and they, we'll tell you a little bit about each of these bottles as we go. But um, they're really focusing on something that's more common in wine, which is the terroir. I can't right. even say it properly. Terroir. But, yeah. Ter yeah. Uh, basically, what that translates to is how the the literal ground, how that farm mm -hmm. affects the taste of the barley, which affects the taste of the product. Which you know, in wine, it's how the ground affects the taste of the grape, and it affects eventually the taste of the wine. Yeah, we have that whole uh, philosophy behind this company as well. Yeah, a really cool thing about Waterford is they're essentially like making a catalog. They're cataloging the regions of these different farms. They're like making, you know, history with, yeah. it's like, it's like a library of whiskey. Do you know how many expressions they have out at the moment? Like it's, they use like a hundred different farms or something. Yeah, it's a it's lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. There are a lot of, and most of, most of their stuff is young because they're new, they're a new distillery. They're, mm -hmm. I mean, this is the oldest, bottle at least four is four years old mm -hmm. so um a lot of new stuff and you're gonna go through some of the growing pains with them right they're gonna say okay well maybe we don't like that farm or you run into like uh, probably a whole bunch of different things where you know that farm's great but we can't use that farm in this cask we have to use it in this cask because it, it like accentuates what we're looking for out of that one really cool thing about waterford is that you can essentially just find your favorite farm yeah and then season after season buy the whiskey that's right because they kind of match on how they they distill it and yeah. how they mature it and how they bottle it and each year you can kind of see how it's changing but just the barley like just yeah. how that grow season is different and it's really a really cool thing that's not done anywhere else that i know of in whiskey at all I wonder if the codes on the on the back here tell you how old these whiskeys are because that's the only thing that's really missing from the back of the bottle. Like it tells you about the farm on the back of the bottle. It tells you that it's, you know, unchill filter, no added color. It tells you that this one over here is organic. It tells you the ingredients, which remember Ralphie was thought that that was a big deal that a company would reveal actually the put ingredients on the back. Ingredients. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. so this one says Irish barley, water and yeast. And then the only one that says something different is this one here, which says, um, <clears throat> dynamic or biodynamic Irish barley, water, yeast. And then they all say no coloring unchill filter all bottled at 50 percent abv um yeah just really interesting uh, waterford was the number one uh distillery on my top five distilleries to look out for yeah um just really impressed and really intrigued by uh, what this uh, distillery is coming out with 
Yeah, so, I mean, let's get started because we've got a lot to get through when it comes to the actual whiskeys themselves. Mm -hmm. A quick couple thank yous to uh, another Mark, the head of communications that orchestrated us getting these bottles, and then uh, Tammy, who's the Canadian rep, um, who got these bottles to us. Uh, So thank you guys. Um, Over here on my right is the bottle, also on your... Your, the cup on your right, the bottle right here, which is called, uh, well, Single Farm Origin is Hookhead Edition 1.1. You want to explain what the 1.1 means? Yeah, so my understanding about that is that 1.1 means this is the first time they've used that farm. So okay. this is the first edition of the farm, uh, like a 1.2 would be the second edition. So like the second grow season, uh, so on and so forth. Um, I'm not sure if they're producing barley twice a year or just once a year, but like I said before, if you find a farm that you like, you can just essentially follow that year after year. And I think that's a really cool thing. Um, they have a huge catalog of, yeah. of different whiskeys, um, from different farms and really cool just to kind of isolate just the barley and really like, really focus on the barley, right? Cause like yeah. everyone knows that barley makes the best whiskey. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess that's opinionated, but it's not really because well, it is the most flavorful grain that's yeah. distilled. I mean, rye guys would argue that their stuff is better and, sure. and whatever, but there's a reason why single malt scotch is the most sought after whiskey in the entire world. Sure. We're not talking about the US, yeah. we're talking about the entire world, Yeah. right? Um, single malt whiskey now, single malt scotch in particular because it's the most um, it's the it's the country that uses the most single malt barley, mm-hmm. right? But uh, anyway, we digress. Um, Malt, malting barley just makes it, it just does magic. Yeah. Okay, so on the back of this bottle, I think it's really cool. They, they tell you a little bit of the story of Hookhead, uh, which is the farm, and they tell you kind of, like, you know, Martin, they tell you the farmer, the, uh, Martin Foley on the back, and then uh, grows his barley, um, it tells you that the barley itself is exposed to salt-laden storms because it's a coastal farm, right? right? So sea mist and ocean breeze, um, it's an extreme maritime terroir. So if you like spirit-driven whiskeys, yeah. this stuff is for you because it really does highlight the spirit. Very, very much so. Yeah. Um, on the nose, I'm getting a nice buttery note. Mm-hmm. Something buttery. Yeah, you get like on the palate, there's a nice like, you know, um, honey note, maybe a little bit of citrus. But again, like that that barley, that cereal, that grain. Yeah. It's very spirit driven. Yeah. Um, they aren't using casks that are masking their distillate. No. So in this one in particular... Um, Hang tight. It is uh, USFF. So if someone knows what that is, they can put it in the comments below, but I don't. US Virgin Oak. And then a Prem Fren Oak. And then Vido Nat. So these are all short forms, and I'm sure that they mean something, (laughs) but I don't know enough about it. So we're saying like the French wine casks? Is that what I'm assuming there's a French wine cask here, a Virgin Oak cask, uh, US. Yeah. And then probably um, a U.S. Uh, ex bourbon. Yeah. Um, like you said, fifty percent. I don't pick up. I don't pick up the saltiness that you would pick up from a maritime distillery, mm-hmm. right? Like a a distillery that's on the coast. I'm not getting that. So the barley is mm. apparently. So I wonder now. Like this is the this is the topic at hand. Some might argue that. There is no such thing as terroir when it, terroir, terroir when it comes to um, whiskey because uh, after the distillation process, you kind of strip the barley of you know its environment, mm-hmm. and then you're just getting the core of what it is. Yeah, I, I could be wrong about that. I mean, I'm not, I mean, I'm not saying that. I don't know. Yeah. We're gonna find out actually very soon. But yeah, I mean, I don't know how well someone would do being like, here is you know. 
four whiskeys. Tell me what region they come from. That and, and it's what I think personally. I again speaking from ignorance here, but I think it's easier to do with wine than it is to do with whiskey. Sure. Because it, the for, like the whole process is different. Yeah. Right. You're not stripping the grape. The grape is used inside. You know. Yeah. To I mean, format. you might have a better chance if you're like, here are four, you know, distillates. Yeah. This is just, you know, our white dog, our, you know, straight from the still. Mm -hmm. Then maybe you could. That because like when you, when you mature something in a cask, I mean, obviously these are quite young, so they haven't taken that much of the cask with them. Yeah. You still get lots of the distillate. Yeah. But there's so many ways that Scotch whiskey can be altered when in maturation, right? It yeah. just depends on what, what you're putting it in. And it's just going to completely mask the terroir of, of that region. I, I mean, again, I'm speaking from ignorance, but I don't know. I, 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 tell me otherwise. Mm -hmm. Like, show me otherwise. And I think, I think if eventually I would like to set up an interview with them uh, on maybe the rant, we can do it together. And like, just kind of talk us through, like, how do we know, how do we taste the difference between this farm and that farm? Like, how do I smell the difference between this farm and that farm? Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I mean, with Scotch, I guess you could be like, okay, this is like the lowland kind of profile. This is yeah. more Speyside, whatever. But that's not the barley it, that's speaking to you. It's the, it's the location of the distillery that's speaking to you, right? right. So that makes it, I think, I think it makes a huge difference, Yeah. right? Um, what do you think about that one? That's pretty good. Yeah, I like, I like that it. one. I like it. I mean, every single Waterford bottle that I've tried, I thought it was great. Yeah. Yeah, it's you crushed that one. <laughs> yeah, it's gone. It's gone. It's completely gone. <laughs> um, there's something about it, right? It's just like, it's it's different. Because it's like, does it taste like Irish whiskey to you? I don't think that it does no. necessarily taste like Irish whiskey. I, I wouldn't be able to identify that as Irish whiskey. Because it's malted barley. Yeah. And I also think they're using a very traditional style of distillation and stuff like that. They're making it like scotch. I don't, yeah. I don't, they're not using unmalted barley in this, right? No, they don't use, a, they don't, it's all malted barley if, yeah. as far as I know. Yeah, single malt. And uh, the distillation process is, I think, identical to scotch, whereas with, with uh, Irish whiskey, you're going to get something that's a little different, like the pot stills, or I, I can't mm -hmm. remember exactly the difference, but. Really, um, a single pot still. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's kind of like they're, they're making it like they would make scotch, but it's just in Ireland. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I think a couple of companies are doing that now in Ireland as well. Mm -hmm. um, we should move on though. Should we? I've already moved on. I'm on number two. I'm number two? It. Yeah. So number two mm -hmm. is the um, single farm origin Lakefield edition 1.1. So new farm again. Yeah, so new farm again. Uh, these are available in Canada at the moment. Uh, Western Canada in particular. Mm -hmm. um, so the lake field is, I wasn't able to find the barreling of these ones. Uh, again, three years old of the lake field. Um, but let's give it a shot. Yeah, so this one, um, again, the same kind of profile. You get really nice uh, multi-characteristic cereal grain. Again, with that sweetness, um, lots of vanilla, maybe a little caramel. I would say this one is a little bit less alcohol forward mm. on the nose. But a little bit less going on as well. Like I got a little bit a little bit more from the first one, the, the yeah. hookhead. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, it's, it's honey drizzled over like oats or something. It's like, it's very grainy. Yeah. And, and lots of honey. It's like that's honey sweetness and vanilla. Yeah. I, I would say that this one I taste the youth more than the first one. Mm -hmm. um, What's that cereal? Honey bunches of oats? Yeah. This, all these whiskeys taste like honey bunches of oats. Yeah. yeah. Even like a honey nut Cheerio. Yeah. Like a honey nut Cheerio. Yeah, it's very much like that. Yeah. It's very much like that with Waterford. Um, Mm -hmm. That is like their underlying profile, and you pick that up in a lot of a lot of their whiskeys. It's exciting to find out what these guys are going to be like um, in the future, and I don't think they'll ever. And what I think, why I think they really appeal to the Scot, is because um, the Scottish love their their distillate forward whiskey. I, I'm I'm generalizing, of course, mm -hmm. but our friends Ralphie. Um, 
Roy. They love that distillate forward yeah. whiskey. That that whiskey that speaks to you um, aside from the cask. Yeah. Like not necessarily the cask that's speaking to you. It's mm-hmm. the whiskey itself. The you know um, these that's very much what's going on here. Absolutely. Yeah. The the maturation does not outweigh the distillate. No. Not like with other whiskeys, like a big sherry bomb, mm-hmm. where uh, you you lose the stuff that you're used to trying. But this, yeah, absolutely not. Yeah, and I think that's what they need, right? Because like, if they're trying to highlight the growing of the barley, yeah, you don't want to put it like a first fill sherry cask in any of this stuff. That's right. It will drown it out. I mean, I would I would be interested to see how it reacts with that eventually. The cool thing about Waterford is that you put some age on this stuff. I mean, it doesn't drink like it's three-year-old whiskey. No. I mean... It's not It's not harsh on the palate. Now, this is the thing. Uh, I think we're starting to see with all sorts of things happening in the market that the preconceived notions of what young whiskey is, mm-hmm. that's that's being shattered that's being shattered across like Scotland. It's being shattered across yeah. the world. You know what I mean? Like we're having eight year old scotch that's blowing away 20 year old scotch. Sure. Like that never used to happen before. People never used to think that way. Like it's a whole philosophy change. Like it's a whole mindset that's changed. Um, it's attention to detail and it's quality ingredients. Exactly. Right? I mean, that's really the key. It's not necessarily how long it's in the cask for it. Because if you have bad distillate and, you know, your cask isn't that good, yep. it doesn't matter if it's going to be in there for 50 years. It's not going to make it better. Yeah. Right? It's like, look at Octomore. Three-year-old Octomore. Five-year-old Octomore. Yeah. I mean, I'm still saying that there's older whiskey in there. Yeah. But still. Yeah. Exactly. I no, mean, you, you nailed it. And this is and probably the best possible timing for Waterford, for a company like Waterford to come out, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I should add that uh, the back says, derived from limestone and sandstone, winner of the barley grower of the ign- enig- <laughs> enigmatic uh, Samus Duggan. I don't know what's going on here, but um, <laughs> it's a winner of the barley one awards. Wow. Yeah. Barley Awards. Barley Awards. Um, yeah. Yeah, take a look at Waterford's website for more information on this stuff. Because um, like, there's a plethora of information on, yeah. on their whiskeys. I mean, even just the casual, like, sitting with this, reading it. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, the little story behind each farm on the back of the bottle. Mm-hmm. I think that's really cool. I think that's really cool. I've moved on to the third one, and this is my favorite so far. So the third one is the organic. Yeah. It's the biodynamic, uh, organic, it's certified like organic. Arcadian uh, series. Ar- the Arcadian series. This is a 1.1 as well. So another new farm. Yeah. Um, this farm. How many barley farms are in Ireland? They just, I mean, there's got to be a lot, right? I guess there's a lot. Eccentric to some, uh, you never really regenerative think like, to maybe others. Like, you know, they use like a hundred-ish more farms, but... Yeah. I mean, I'd read all of these to... to this one's cool. Uh, eccentric to some, regenerative to others, biodynamic agriculture goes beyond the ordinary ecological mindset. Drawing upon ancient lore of lunar cycles and exotic preparations. Oh, wow. This is... <laughs> This is everything that this Ralphie the, hates. This is the, hip, in that, this like, is the hippie, this the is the hippie uh, <laughs> farmer, right? <laughs> it's cool. I mean, it's a little bit of a backstory, but I shouldn't say it's everything that Ralphie hates. Um, it seeks to char- uh, charge soils with vitality and barley with vibrancy. Practiced by the most visionary and curious, we too are intrigued about the most natural flavors we can capture in spirit. Should have worn my glasses. Um, for this landmark whiskey distilled from Ireland's only biodynamic barley, we invoke wow. the goddess of the moon for our most... Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Hysteric and <laughs> evocative bottling. Okay. I think Waterford, can, you can save that, you know, rhetoric, marketing rhetoric. Yeah, not necessary, but... 
could just um, be like, this is our... This is our, this is this our, our hippie, organic. This is our hippie uh, yeah. farm. Sure. I mean, it, it, they're appealing to a particular person when they come up with an organic, right? But uh, my favorite so far... What's your favorite? Of the three, my goodness. I think, good. honestly, I think you need to drink some grappa. I think you'd really like grappa. So I've had grappa, as yeah. you say. Grappa. Um, this is better than grappa. Hmm. You probably had some horrible grappa though. I've had, well, I don't know. I've had grappa that you've had. Yeah? Yeah. I see how you're making the similarity. I yeah. see how you're making the, the, the connection the, with grappa. Yeah. So this is very, honestly, it's, this one in particular is very similar to some of the grappas I've had. In yeah, it is like, it is kind of like a white grape like note to it yeah and it, it's there's french wine in the uh, french wine casks in this virgin oak as well first fill um bourbon oak and then the vindo vindo i don't know what that is vindo that's a type of wine obviously french wine but again like <clears throat> the thing that i like i think maybe most about these whiskeys is the balance between the sweetness and the barley yeah it's like it works super well it plays off each other it's right in like, if it's like 50% sweet, it's 50% barley. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah, you're crushing these. Yeah. You're enjoying I can't them. get enough, man. Yeah. I do love Waterford stuff a lot. Yeah. That's good. This one reminds me so much of, of grappa. Like, even like the finish, um, the kind of like anise kind of like. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah, it is like a very, like, very mild. Uh, um, black licorice and yeast yeah. on the finish. Yeah. Nice. I like it. Good. That's good. Man. I don't know if that's my favorite of the three, though, to be honest with you. I, and these are all, I think, the same price. I lo You know what I like about when we do reviews is we, we have similar tastes, but we tend to mark every whiskey a little different. Yeah. Like, we're never, we're rarely ever the same. I like that. That's true. I Not like, like malt reviews, where Narby gives a mark. <laughs> Just a straight call And then Mike's there. like, exactly right. <laughs> exactly the same. <laughs> you know, I mean, my explanation for that whenever anybody asks is, those two have tried so many whiskeys that like... They're very just, honed in with yeah, their score. Yeah. Very honed in. Yeah. I mean, I think we are too, to a certain extent, but uh, whatever, it's just different. We, we have... Marking whiskey is difficult. Because you come up with a mark, and then you're like, okay, well, wait, I just marked this thing that, right. so now I have to mark this that, and like, and yeah. it doesn't necessarily always make sense like that. You absolutely, know? absolutely. It's like if I score this 85, well, I scored this one 84, but I actually like like the 84 more than this one. So why did I score that 85? It's, yeah. it's, it's tough. It is tough, and and it I I try to tell everybody like it changes daily. I wish I would have stuck to instead of like caving to peer pressure stuck to the the letter gradings because at least it was more broad it was more vague like, it was more broad but i appreciate the number score out of 100 because i know i know most people everything do. is going to be an a or a b yeah. every single whiskey is going to be an a or a b pretty much right unless you find something that's like not that good yeah i think in that sense that like if if you find something that you wouldn't buy then you you have to mark it accordingly I mean, that's why I use a scale of 100 plus half points. Yeah. Because, like, some things are just a little bit, just a tick better. Like, a half tick better. Yeah. You, you have to make that distinction, I think, or else everything is a fucking an 8 out of 10. Yeah. Or a 7 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10. You have yeah. three marks. If you're it, scoring out of 10, you score three marks. It's, hard. it's a 7, that, that an 8, hard. or a 9. It's true. Right? Because nothing's a 10. Yeah. And a 6... Terrible. Like, You're what? not going to buy that. Six. What You're not going to buy it. Six out of ten. You can't buy a six. Right? I mean, it's really hard. It's like, there's almost no point to score on a one to ten. Yeah. I Unless mean, you're doing half marks. And then, okay, maybe. It, it all depends on how you perceive the marker. Like, for, for the marker, for the individual marking, um, if that person loves his sevens, really loves his eights, mm -hmm goes crazy for his nines and has never seen a 10, yeah. then, okay, fine, I can, I can respect that. You, you have, have to, to do it on that scale. Yeah. You do have to do it on that scale. And there was a reviewer that um, reviewed for Toronto Whiskey Society, and like, you know, a 70 would be a good score for him. Yeah. yeah. A 75 would be like something you would go out, he would recommend you buying that. Yeah. Right? An 80, you have to be really good, 
and it, you know he had maybe a couple whiskeys that ever got to 90. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I mean, I don't know. I, don't I know get what, it because it's like it's there's, so that, there's a world of whiskey, and you're never gonna try all the best stuff. Yeah. So it's like. If you start scoring stuff 95, well, you don't got much wiggle room to go up from there. No, you don't. But I think, like, at our point now, we're, we're both around, what, like, well over, you know, in the, in the, probably the 2000s of whiskeys we've tried over the years. I wonder how many whiskeys we've tried. We're up there. It's man. more than 2,000, don't you think? I'm, I don't know. I mean, we couldn't name 2,000 whiskeys if we no, tried. But. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think, yeah, by this point... Having whiskey for the last 17 to 19 years, mm -hmm. gotta be up there. It's gotta be up, like, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, well, maybe well over 2,000. Sometimes yeah. we go to Spirit of Toronto and you try like 100 yeah. whiskeys. Right? <laughs> Spirit of Toronto, which is like, more please. Yeah. Um, I've, I'm crushing these. I'm on the fourth one. Yeah, so this is the, this bottle here, which is, the cuvee, the cuvee, and what's different about this one is that it's four years old. Uh, I'm not gonna read the back because I mean, maybe Jeremy will edit out some of the the the, the back parts. <laughs> um, yeah, four years old, U.S. first fill bourbon cask, U.S. new oak cask, French oak, and then the Vindo or VDN. I don't, I'm not sure what that stands for, but VDN, I'm assuming that's the Vindo, the one that we. Okay. Yeah. So, um, 40,000 bottles. So this one had a little bit more than the others. What are you getting? So there's this weird note in here, and it's maybe like some kind of fruit. It's maybe like star fruit. Or like a pear, or some kind of like lighter orchard, yeah, something a kiwi. I don't know. It's hard to say. It's like those things maybe like combined into one. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, some like there is some sort of. There's something weird in here. Tropicalish kind right? of fruit. Yeah, it's like it's 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 different things that don't exist. Mm -hmm. But again, it's still like that, that honey sweetness, that multi-characteristic, yeah. it runs through all these whiskeys. Yep. That's really good. I like that one a lot. I like that one a lot. I think still the first one's my favorite. Yeah, and I would still say that this, the Arcadian series one would be my favorite. Interesting. I think they're all around the same price. Yeah. Let's just confirm that. <clears throat> and like, these whiskeys are not necessarily super cheap, right? They're about a hundred bucks each. They're over a hundred bucks, just over a hundred bucks each. Yeah, like a hundred and one dollars each. I'll tell you right now. But what you're getting here is you're getting a really unique whiskey, a very spirit-driven whiskey, 50% mm -hmm. ABV, which is perfect bottling strength, I think, for this. Yep. So there is there is an Acadian. There's an Acadian, but it's a different farm, so I, I shouldn't even mention that. Um, right now, Kensington Wine Market has the hook head at 76 bucks. Okay. Great price. Great yeah. price. So yeah. originally 102 but... On sale? On sale for $76. The Lakefield, $77, originally 103 the cuvee mm -hmm. is ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Yeah. Okay. And then the biodynamic is one fifteen. So you're paying more money for the pure organic. The organic. Yeah. The barley costs more. Which is my favorite. The barley costs more. Yeah. Right. The barley costs more because it's organic. That makes a lot of sense. But um, I'm happy with all. I mean, I. I yeah, absolutely. Uh, can we mark these? I all of them. Yeah. Uh, are you going to be able to mark them now that it's over? Or no, I'll mark my favorite one. Okay. Because I don't remember the other ones that. But okay. I, I think, think that's a good idea. Let's mark our favorite. Okay. Um, 
I think for me, when I score whiskey, um, there's a certain threshold where I'm like, this is the mark where I would recommend people buying this completely blind, like never trying it before. Mm -hmm. That mark's an 88. I don't know if I can go 88 on this just because I feel like this, these whiskeys are for someone who is really into to whiskey. Yeah. I don't know if someone like just first starting out would be into this because it's really spirit driven and spirit driven whiskeys. I feel like maybe you need a palate for it. Right. But maybe not. Yeah. Maybe not. I mean, I think that someone just starting out can appreciate this stuff as well. This is an easy 87 and a half. I'm going one half tick lower than a recommended blind, blind, buy, buy. buy a yeah. blind, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. Absolutely delicious. I really like Waterford stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I would, I would, I'm going to buy that bottle. Yeah. I actually have, a, can I have a tie? Mm -hmm. I think I have a tie. I'm going to take one more sip of this bad boy. Okay. I'm going to go with, I'm going to, so I really like the cuvee. I really like all three, all four of these. Mm -hmm. Um, but the cuvee, what it came in, it comes in second. Mm -hmm. It comes in second because I don't know what it is about this this one right here. So it's the hook head. Yeah. And this is the cheapest one of the bunch. There you go. Well, right now anyway, because it's on sale for seventy six forty nine at um, Kensington Wine Market in Alberta, and it's this one right here. I really like this. I don't know. It's. I feel like it's. It drinks the oldest mm -hmm. of of the group. Yeah. Um, not that that matters to me because it doesn't. But it's the most pleasing in what I'm looking for in a whiskey. It's a it's a pour and play kind of whiskey for yep. me. Um, yeah. I don't think you need to touch this stuff with water. No. I think 50% ABV is like exactly where this needs to be. Yeah. Gonna give this one an 86. 86, I think they're all good. I'm gonna give this one an 86, I really like it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, as far as blind like blind buy goes, it varies for me. Yeah. It depends on price. Yeah. If we're talking a $300 whiskey, a blind buy has to be closer to a 90, mm -hmm. right? Um, if we're talking a $50 whiskey, blind buy is like an 85. Sure. Right? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it, a fifty dollar whiskey shouldn't. I mean, if it's an eighty eight, then it's like by ten. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, I think that like someone who hasn't tried anything from Waterford before, um, don't expect it to, to taste like Irish whiskey because it it really it's, doesn't. No, it doesn't. It tastes more like a younger spirit driven Scotch. Yep. 100%. So if you like that profile, I would say try any of the Waterford uh, bottles, because every single one that I've tried has been really good. Yeah. Um, some of them, I just guess it just depends on, on palate, right? Because like, we don't agree on our favorites with this. No. We are, we're pretty different. Yeah. Um, we usually, I mean, within reason, we usually are, and, and that's that's a good thing, right? Like you, you don't, I like, I like when I'm watching the Scotch uh, Test Dummies, and Bart's like, I hate it, and, and <laughs> Scott's like, I love it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like that's that's what you want, because then you you figure out who your palate's more like, mm -hmm. and you you aim toward that, right? Yeah. yeah. So definitely. Um, but uh, what an it. exciting distillery, and yeah. I mean, it's really cool what they're doing because no one else is really doing that. Just like highlighting different farms. Yeah. With barley production, uh, it's really cool. Yeah. I think that other regions could do this. Canada could do this, you know. They, they are, they are now, right? Shelter Point, Shelter Point is pretty much, I would say, like the the most direct comparable yeah. uh, as far as like, well, they have their own farm, mm -hmm. so it's a little different. Yeah. Um, and Yukon, uh, two brewers, they can't really have. I mean, it. I mean that that's not true. Now you're actually bang on. A company could come out. We don't have it because a company could come out and say, "Hey, we need to get three, three farms from Ontario, three farms from Saskatchewan, three farms from Manitoba, three farms from Quebec." No, this is what this is what Canada needs to do. Okay, province 
versus province versus territory. That'd be cool. Right? That'd be cool. I want to go to Ontario. What's your best barley farm? Yeah. Give me, give me that, give me that crop. Yeah. Distill it. Yeah. Same thing with every single province, every single territory, and just release them as like one, you know, how many do we have? 13? 13 yeah. provinces and territories? Ontario will release one, yeah, 13 with 13 the territories. provinces and territories. 10 it's provinces, 13 three territories. 13 bottle set, your best yield from one year. That would be amazing. That would be really cool. That would be really, really cool. That would be really just, cool. Just see that. And like mature the same way, the exact same casks, exact same amount of time maturation, blend them together like they do with Waterford. Did we just come up with a distillery idea? <laughs> Yeah, we fucking did. Well, I mean, we copied it from... We, we're I mean, copy, they we're invented copying, it, yeah. but it would be cool if Canada Absolutely. did that. I think so. Right? And, and the thing is, is you want to you wanna see terroir, Canada is this, almost the size of Europe. Like, it's huge. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's... How many Irelands can you fit in Canada? Absolutely. You know what I mean? I don't know if every single province and territory grows barley. I feel like Probably not could. all the territories. The territories are pretty far north. And they're cold. Yeah, um, but there's there's different types of barley, true. right? There's like that winter barley that like, you know what? Um, the Morangy? No, I was gonna say um, Wisers did like a thing, oh, right? I, what did the, they do with that? No, like, winter. They, was the it, winter was it, was rye. It, was it rye? Winter rye. We could do it with rye. We could do it with rye. We could do it with rye. Right? Could, right? It doesn't need to be barley. It's it true. could be rye from every province. That's every true. Territory. That's true. We um, don't know enough about our country to know if, if every province territory can grow even barley if you just or rye. Stuck with the provinces, even but, but, if you just yeah. stuck with the ten provinces, even just do, do even just do any region that grows barley. Yep. Give me your best farm. Yeah. Let's distill it. Let's age it. Let's release it as a series. Really I think cool, be cool. Really cool thing. Just copy what Waterford's doing. <laughs> What's what? Yeah. They don't own the rights to to do this. Right? No, of course. Uh, yeah. You know what? I mean, at the end of the day, what they're doing is really cool. Um, I, I'm. Are we? My only question will always be because of what we know about whiskey. Mm -hmm. My only question will always be: Are we experiencing a difference in this whiskey because of the farm of the barley, or is it because of the fact that you know it's different casking, it's aged in a different part of the warehouse? It's, you know, like there's so many factors. It's that's why I, that's why I don't think it's quite like wine. I don't know. Like, yeah, convince I mean, me otherwise. Yeah. I think what Waterford, tr they try to do everything the same, right? So yeah. They so it, the same. yeah. But like, of course you can't. But there is cask difference between all four of these, right? I mean, take a look at, we've had examples of Cavalan. One barrel sitting here, one yeah. barrel sitting right next to it. Yeah. And both single casks distilled the same day, bottled the same day. Same wine distiller that gives same, you the cask. Same, completely different whiskeys. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like, you can't. You can't make it the same. That's what I'm saying. So With a single cask. Right. Yeah. So, it's so like, how do I know that I'm tasting the earth? <laughs> how do I know that I'm tasting that, the, the where that, the, the geographical location of where that barley came from? You're right. It's, it's, it's so hard. It's, yeah. And, and the I, human I, ability is not, you can't do it. I, I mean, respect totally what they're trying to do. I just don't know if I, like, I, explain it to, if there is, then prove it to me. Show yeah. me. But I, I mean, I'm sure there's a, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I hope to be corrected. I really do. And I, I'm not saying I don't believe it. I'm just saying there's so many factors that I, how do I know that that's what I'm tasting? When they release some eight year old, some 10 year old, some 12. Yeah, I think that's the key, right? Like when, when they have, let's say they have 10 different farms. I know they have more than that, but let's say they, they're using 10. When they have, uh, you know, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6. Mm -hmm. And you're at 1.6 and you're like, this definitely came from Hook Farm. Then I'm like, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> this their Hook Farm definitely has, yeah. you know, uh, ter terroir, you know? Yeah. But until then, I, convince me. Yeah. I, I gotta be convinced. I mean, each growing season is gonna be different, right? And that's the other problem too, yeah. right? Like that's a factor too. The weather. It was and like it was our, super it was, rainy this year. It was like I don't know. I don't know. I mean, climates are just getting more extreme and more different. You know. But I will say that 
it's doable in wine. It's doable. I've, yeah. I've watched sommeliers nail, yeah, nail the farm, the like everything. I'm sure there's people in whiskey that can be like, this is a lowland, this is a highland, this is this came from this barley distillery, this sure. came, or a farm. Yeah, like, I'm sure there's Scottish people that can do that because they know where they get they're sourcing all their all, yeah. all their barley and. You know, it's, it can only come from like 10 places, but mm-hmm. when you start to add like 20 farms to this, True. it's gonna get tough. But I, I'm, I'm very interested to, I, to see what happens. I would love this, like when this whiskey gets some age on it. I mean, now it's it's delicious stuff. Yeah, when this great. gets some age on it? Yeah, woo. it's gonna be great. I yeah. mean, this could be one of the best distilleries uh, on the planet. The, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because and they put so much thought into detail into all their stuff and the quality is there. And I hate to say it, I hate to say the, the nasty C word, but this is super collectible stuff. Like it, it can be, right? Because I know maybe there's too many expressions to collect, but great presentation. Not that that's ever been my thing, but like there's a great presentation here. The box is really nice. There are these blue boxes here. Um, that I probably should have had out the whole time, but honestly, you're t- totally right. But only if this distillery blows up. Yeah. If this distillery blows up, the 1.1 additions of all these farms are going to be worth crazy, crazy money. Even though they're just like three-year-old whiskey. Yeah. That's just okay, and it, yeah, it's good whiskey, but it's not like mind blowing. I guarantee you, someone out there is already doing it. Yeah, of course. Someone out there is already right? collecting the. The 1.1s from all of them. Sure. And the 1.2s from all, and you know what? They're they, already naming barley of the year farms, right? There you go. Think about there you like go. in the future where it's like, oh my god, this farm won barley of the year. Yeah. And like the the 1.1 edition is now worth triple fucking retail. I wonder if that retail. puts pressure on other companies to just, to start doing the same thing, like naming their their farm. Yeah. Right. It's but, cool. Uh, it's very cool. I mean, you got you got the X. CEO of Brook Lottie saying that Ireland has the best barley in the world. I think that you have to take him for his word for that. I think so. I Why mean, would you start? Who are we to argue? Their, yeah, you can't. Right? <laughs> who are we to argue? He, yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Um, really cool stuff. I'm really, I'm really excited about what they're doing. I love their presentation. I love, I love the fact that they are incredibly transparent. Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Just really cool stuff overall. And I'm sure that there's a way that you can tell how old it is just by these barcodes at the back. I'm sure. Maybe it's on the website, maybe it's just on the website. But the age of these is like all over Whiskey Base, pretty much anywhere you look up the bottle. So it must be a very easy way to find out how old they are. For those who are gonna complain that they are, um, unage stated which, sure right which they are but I mean they are but like I said I, I'm sure there's a way to figure out how old they are really quickly yeah <clears throat> but um I mean it's it's the whiskey nerds wet dream right I mean it's, yeah. it's a really cool thing that they're doing yeah essentially you nailed it like they they are appealing to the exact crowd that's been whining and complaining about transparency and unique um distillate driven all those different types you want to talk about the bottle design what do you think about uh glass corks yay or nay i'm all i'm all about glass corks me too because first first of all go ahead do you know how you open a glass cork you just push push it it up with your thumb yeah right you push it up with your thumb if you try to rip it out like this it won't won't it's it's really hard it's proof and you're gonna freaking yank it out and it's gonna be a fountain of whiskey all over the place. So uh, yeah, just uh, push it up with your thumb really gently and then you can take it out uh, super easily. You know who else does that? Shelter Point. Yeah. Shelter Point's doing that too. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind it. You're never gonna get a broken cork. That's the best part. Yeah. Um, There's never gonna be cork damage. I assume the seal is just as good, if not better. It seems it seems to be like the fact that you can pull it out. You can store it like this. You can store it like you that. You can. I mean, can you though? I don't know. Is I there a rubber know. thing? Maybe. Don't quote me on that. I mean, I don't. <laughs> don't quote me on storing it that way. But there's no ex- like if you touch the rubber. Let's say it ships like this. You're not gonna. It's not gonna be a big deal, right? 
Yeah, oh, 100 percent. That's fine. Um, rubber takes a long time to like decompose, so I don't. I really don't see it being a problem. Right. So if it's stored like that for you know a month of shipping, not a big deal. Yeah. Not. They are doing everything. They've. They are well thought out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Methodical. I like it. Yeah. Shelter or shelter point. Shelter point should copy their their thing. Let's uh, let's get a tarwar of Canada. You know what? They they kind of have something similar. They have the Montford. Uh, it's it's funny because uh, shelter point is older. It's an older distillery than than Waterford, and they had that Montford for a long time since like yeah pretty early on. So I wonder if some of the ideas from Waterford were borrowed, or, or the other way around. Some of the ideas from Shelter Point were borrowed for Waterford, yeah. because their glass top is the same. <laughs> I mean, the bottle's obviously very different. Um, I wonder. I just wanna see a province versus province. Barley. Barley competition. Barley competition. Single malt Canadian whiskey, province versus province. I think. By I one think distillery. My it turned the same way. My theory is that if that ever happened, BC would win. Yeah, they, they have the best climate for it. Yeah, they have the best climate for they it. Do they don't. For they don't go below. Ontario has good thing. soil. Ontario has good soil. It does, but it. The problem is like the. I would assume the winter plays a factor. Or maybe that's a benefit. Who knows? Maybe because because we have our winters, it's a benefit in. Listen, you take the best of the best. You know your best harvest from that year. Yep times all the provinces that grow barley let's see who uh, comes in on top i, I think, would love to see it let's set it up let's see love let's, to let's see talk it. to a would distillery. love to see that we should we should talk to um how Shelter. cool would that be man it'd be very cool you know like a six to seven bottle series yeah i mean my goodness we know some distillers that would uh maybe listen to that kind of advice yeah really cool it would really, be fun. really cool it would be fun should we wrap it up or? It's gonna do it for us. Yeah. Um, let us know, have you tried anything from Waterford? Let us know in the comments down below. Do you have a favorite farm yet? Are you that hardcore that you uh, have tried multiple, multiple farms? And, I'm gonna and, go and out and on know. a limb here and say that uh, the Hookhead Farm is my favorite. Wow. Despite yeah. the fact that, um, you know, um, this one here, which is Lakefield, one barley of the year, I still like my uh, my hook hook uh, hookhead. Let me do something real quick yep. and check out Whiskey Base. What's the highest rated Waterford um, whiskey? I'm gonna say it is the Lake Feel. No, it's the Biodynamic, the one that you like. You don't say. Yeah. You don't say. Yeah. Well. There's also only 53 votes on the biodynamic, and there is 90 on the uh, lake field, which is 84, so a point difference. And the uh, the hookhead is 83.7, so but 92 votes. Yeah. yeah. So you are the popular uh, vote at the moment. Right. Yeah. Your 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 preference anyway. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I'm buying a bottle of this right now. As soon as we uh, stop recording, I am adding it to the multiple bottles that I have waiting yeah, for Yeah, you me. have quite a few of uh, Waterford, right? Uh, Waterford, I have, yeah, I do have a couple. Yeah. Yeah, I reviewed a couple on the channel before. Um, and yeah, just, I'm going to add this, the Arcadian one to the collection because I really do like it a lot. Yeah, it is good stuff. Yeah. They are, they are all good. I think the only thing that, um, maybe freaked me out a little bit about the not freaked that's not the right word um i just the grappa i get the grappa in, in um in the arcadian and when i'm drinking a grappa i want a grappa but when i'm drinking a whiskey i want a whiskey i see you yeah. know that's what you're saying but very good yeah definitely the most unique of the four 100 yeah. percent. like yeah. there's no argument there mm -hmm. yeah that's gonna do it for us. Um, if you want to support the podcast a bit more, you can check out our Patreon. You can get it for a dollar a month and get this episode uh, sooner than anyone else does. Yep. And uh, yeah, we'd love to see you guys on there. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a good one.
Cheers, guys. Cheers.